right, we're here at my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin, and the first thing you can see is that I put a little bit of pumpkin down here, and the worms are absolutely attacking it. Now, today, we are going to deconstruct this bin all the way down to the bottom layer because I'm going to do some rotation here, but I want to check and see how many worms are in each level. There's only one level I'm going to count, but we'll see the comparison between all of them. So let's go ahead and dig in here and see how they did with this pumpkin. I put this in about... 48 hours ago and they've eaten a good portion of it my three sons and their girlfriends carved up some pumpkins so i took some of the chunks that they carved out and put it in here and they absolutely started eating through this paper towel right where that pumpkin was so we'll move that to the side real quick now this top feeding tray has been on here for 159 days it spent several of those days down below as an inoculating tray, but just recently for the last 76, it's been the top feeding tray for this worm tower. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in here real quick and look and see how the food is doing because the worms are going to try and squirm down and I don't want to get too much miscalculation when I go between each tray. And right away, I am just feeling oodles of worms right there. Check that out right there. A total worm ball. And you can see there are a mix of blue worms, which are the really thin ones, and red wigglers, which are slightly bigger. So good showing in here. And what we put in here was pineapple chunks and some bananas. So slow foods all around. But oh my gosh, this is just literally a wad of worms right here. So just kind of take a look at this and compare this when we go down below to the other trays. So we can kind of decide, you know, where are the worms residing? Obviously, I think most of them, probably 80%, I would say, would be up here in this top feeding tray. And then maybe the next 20 split between the others. But I'm just going to kind of move stuff around a little bit. And it has a great citrusy smell. Oh, that's right. We put in some tangerine peels, I think. So it's got a little bit of a citrusy smell. And then the pineapple, I think I saw some chunk. I can't even tell if there's a mango seed. But right here, I think, is a pineapple chunk. Can't really see because it's dark. But this would be the flesh side. And this right here, the skin side. And I'm not, well, here we go. Here's the end of the pineapple chunk that we put in there. Again, getting to the flesh. And then I don't really see the bananas, but let me just kind of mix around a little bit. Lots of castings right here. So this tray is gonna go right underneath the new top feeding tray. And that new top feeding tray is gonna come from our inoculating trays. But this tray right here will be able to sit for another 60 days at least underneath and allow the worms to finish off all this food and all this bedding that you see right here. So let me go ahead and kind of flatten this down a little bit. And then we will go to our next level and see how many worms we see there. All right, so this tray has been in the longest. It has been in for 226 days. It also spent quite a bit of time underneath as an inoculating tray. And then it was fed for about 60 days, and now it's been down here for 60 days. So let's compare how many worms we saw in that first one with all those worm balls to what we have here. And this tray right here is going to get harvested today. And when we harvest it, we are going to count all these worms here. So this is the tray that we're going to know for sure how many worms are in here. So I'm just gonna kind of fluff it up and see how it's doing. It looks like they've gotten to every piece and made it into castings. I see maybe, maybe a little bit of colored newspaper, that kind of thing. And we might find some kind of seeds or something like that, like a peach seed. But for the most part, these are just fantastic castings. This right here looks like a plum seed. So we'll go ahead and take that out. And I'm just gonna fluff this up. Now, some of these worms, I don't know how many, might have come down from that top feeding tray but not too many, I don't think. And some of them are probably trying to flee down to the tray right below this. And typically what I do with this vermi hut is I will do a method of harvesting where I put this harvest, this pre-harvest tray, which is now getting harvested, I'll put that on the very top of the new feeding tray and just kind of agitate them and the worms will go down. But this time around, we are going to hand pick out these worms. All right, so I think we've kind of inspected in there get an idea for how many worms you see in here. Obviously, I see much less than the last one, but let's go ahead and compare it to the one right below it, 
which is one of our two inoculating trays that has been on there the longest. Let's go ahead and look at that one. All right, so this tray has been on here for 104 days, and it is the oldest of our two inoculating trays. So what are inoculating trays, you ask? Basically, they're trays that I just fill up with shredded cardboard and a little bit of shredded newspaper, and I put it in dry, put it right on the bottom. And what happens is over time, all the liquid from any of the foods that we feed ends up dripping down into here. And when that happens, it just kind of moistens the cardboard and inoculates it with all the microbes that are dripping down also. And you can see, without me ever putting food scraps in here, the worms have already come in and they have started to break down the cardboard along with the microbes that are in here. So look how many worms are in here and compare that to the one we just did. And do you think it has the same amount of worms? I'm not sure. It definitely is a lower level and that's because it has more weight on them. The way the Vermi Hut is designed is that the trays sit right on top of each other so the worms can come up and down. I've had some suggestions to put kind of risers in the corners and that might work, but as the castings go down and become flatter, there might be a little air gap where the worms can't get up and down. So I just haven't tried that yet, but here you go. Here you can see in this corner where it is mostly still shredded newspaper and cardboard right there. So. There we go, get a good look at the number of worms you see here. And let's kind of compare that to the very first tray that was on the top, that feeding tray, which just had tons of worms and worm balls, and to the tray that was just above it, which is our harvest tray, the one we're gonna harvest today. All right, so let's go down to the one right below it, and it is the very bottom. It is the one that has been on for the least amount of time, and that is our second inoculating tray. So this tray has only been on for 46 days. It has been on the least amount of time and it's at the very bottom. So 46 days ago, we just put in a lot of dry cardboard and I can tell you right now, it is damp. And you can see compared to that other inoculating tray, there are some castings, but it is mostly shredded cardboard. And some of it's even dry right down here. That's one of the reasons I like putting two inoculating trays on because with two trays of dry bedding, it's gonna soak up all the moisture from that top feeding tray that is just you know, dripping down with the food scraps and it's gonna capture it. It's gonna keep all those microbes in here and it's gonna prevent water and moisture from going down into the basin. So check that out. I definitely think we're seeing fewer worms. What do you think? I definitely think there are, but this is actually thicker. And I think uh, consciously I filled it up all the way to the top because I wanted to make sure that we had a lot of cardboard in here, but it also is not as worked through by the worms. There's not as many castings as the one that was right above it. So I'm just gonna kind of fluff this up a little bit. So let me just finish up here and then we will rebuild this vermi hut so that we can feed the new top feeding tray. All right, I have reassembled the Vermi Hut, and what we have on here now is our new top feeding tray. It was the third tray that you saw, and it was the one that had the least amount of material in it. So one of the things I'm gonna do is take all these papers that we used to say how many days were in here, and we will use these as bedding. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now this tray, I mean, look, right there, boom is the bottom of it. So I'm gonna need to put a bunch of bedding in here and that should set us up for our feeding. Now I did notice when I built this that I did not have quite enough cardboard. I think I kind of had run out. I thought I could get away with it, but when you do the inoculating trays, it's real important that you put the bedding all the way to the top if you can, because it's gonna shrink down when the, worm when the worms get in here. So let's go ahead and mix in some bedding first before we set up our feeding zone. So in goes a lot of bedding, even more bedding, and now I'm gonna mix it around. So hopefully in the next 60 days, we will see a lot of this new cardboard in here get broken down, and then it is gonna spend another 60 days after that kind of curing and getting the rest into compost. We're going to give them a pretty big feeding because we want those worms that are right below here in our old top feeding tray where we had those worm balls and stuff. We want them to sense the food that's up here and we want them to come up here. 
while they're still why they are still working on the food that they're working on down below. So I'm going to add a little bit more bedding on the bottom so that when we put the food down, it's not just flat on the plastic there. And that will also help to wet this down. So here's what we have in mind. We have some fast food, which is this lettuce. And then I've got some pumpkin carvings that we're going to put in. We've got some banana peels. We've got some corn, a peach half, I think, and some other good stuff. So let's go ahead and start laying this in here. And there we go with the stock. That'll be gone in about three days. The pumpkin, they're absolutely going to love. So I expect that to be gone pretty quick. The bananas are going to take a little bit longer, and especially these stems. We may, in fact, see these every day for the next 60 days. Not that we're going to be in here every day. But let's go ahead and put those in there. We'll put the corn kind of diagonal right here in the middle. And then we're just going to kind of dump the rest of this stuff out in here. I think this is a mix of maybe some rose petals. We've got our peach right here, some strawberries, another lettuce stock right here, some apple, which is a slow food, and some strawberries. So a good mix of fast and slow food. And again, I'm not treating this like it is the very first feeding of a brand new worm bin. Because remember, down below here, we have two trays and there are about 4,000 worms in here, other than the ones we're going to count out and add at the end. But let's go ahead and cover this back up with some shredded cardboard. Actually, before that, let's add our amendments. So first thing I'll do is add some pulverized expired grains that we had in our pantry. And these are just like grains of oats, various flours and cornstarch, that kind of thing. And then we're going to add some coffee grounds in here. And that's just another food source for them. Just add that right there. And then finally, we'll add a little bit of pulverized eggshell, which is grit for them, for their gizzards. So that they can digest their food and make it smaller. All right, so right on top of here, I'm gonna put more and more shredded cardboard. And this is actually the first time I've had to put this much because the layer was just so thin in here when I built this up as the inoculating bin. Strike that inoculating tray. Thanks, executive producer. And I'm not usually one to add liquid to my vermi hut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the lid on and tomorrow I'm just going to check the humidity. There is a lot of liquid between these three bins and I think what's going to happen is it will condense, hit the lid and come back down. But if it doesn't, what I will probably do is maybe put a few ice cubes on the feeding zone. One, if the feeding zone gets hot or warm, it'll help cool it down. But also ice is a good slow release moisture for your bin if you ever need to kind of add moisture if you don't have a spray bottle that kind of thing all right so we've rebuilt our tower we fed the new top feeding tray only one more thing to do count all those worms in our harvest tray and then we'll release them somewhere off here on the side so that we know how many were in there so we'll be right back all right we harvested out of our pre-harvest tray and now all the castings are in a cocoon nursery and in here is 804 worms that we counted out of that tray. So with that, with that 804 worms that you have right in there, what is your guess for the total amount in the vermi hut system I have here? And how much was in the last top feeding tray that we looked at at the beginning of the video? Again, 804 worms just in that one tray that was the pre-harvest tray right below the top feeding tray. So let's make an area for these guys and let's put them in. And since I had so much dry bedding, I am gonna just dump them right here on the side. And just wanna let you know that that was nine pounds of castings that we got out of there. So hopefully the next one will get somewhere around 10 pounds. I will go ahead and check and see if there's any babies after I'm done filming, but let's go ahead and put these in here like this. Now they are in the top bin and I think that's about it. So I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.